What is a cult? Experts in this field have come up with numerous methods of establishing whether or not a religion or extreme political belief or self-help organization is in fact a cult organization. We have these five points. Shut the fuck up! Psychological coercion to recruit, indoctrinate and retain. Coercing people, making people come around, giving them the belief, putting those ideas in their head, making them think in the way which would best suit the organization, thinking barely at all, allowing the group to do the thinking because it has the truth, and retaining people by constant reinforcement that the belief they're in is the true belief. It has an elitist, totalitarian society. It's a dictatorship, a tyranny, usually run by a small number of people at the top that use the belief system to keep people in line following a guru, a great seer or teacher or minister, someone with charisma. No! Found a leader. But there's a massive dogma about the belief and the person who's the founder and their core principles. They're not accountable. You can't question them or their belief. Otherwise, you're an agent of evil, some kind of deceiver, closed-minded, a hater, simply for asking questions of the group leader. How many cult leaders can you think of? You'll find of present and past ones. The reason why they gather a following is because of their charisma. Whether we talk about Jim Jones and the mass suicides of Jonestown, or whether we talk about the founder of Mormonism, Joseph Smith, or for that matter, L. Ron Hubbard, all of these people, these cult leaders who recruit people by barely believable stories, which they are able to express in a more convincing way because of their charismatic character traits. Retard alert glass! They believe the ends justify the means. Well, that's the propaganda line. So even the most peace-loving of beliefs might think lying, hurting people, doing harm is righteous because, oh well, the end result of this kind of action would justify the means. Oh, it must do because, oh, we have the true belief. You have people who think suicide might be okay for the same reason. Rajneesh movement, following the guru leader Osho, they poisoned their neighbours from their commune in the United States. New members would be brought in and stripped naked, heckled, barked at, broken down mentally and emotionally, and they thought it was okay because, oh, it gets them over their ego so they'll be free within the belief. Sad, plastic winker! Something that should set off alarm bells. The wealth that is gathered by the organisation does not benefit the members or society. You can at least say with a great many religions, they try and help society, whether it's feeding the poor or whether it's trying to help send aid to Africa to try and help the most desperate of people in society. The real hardcore cults, they don't do that. They have it for the organisation or in extreme cases, the singular leader. What did we see with the Rajneesh movement? We saw people surrender their worldly goods their money, all that they had. And that wealth was then used to buy a fleet of cars, Rolls Royces, for the guru. So they surrendered all that they had. And that wealth became the guru's wealth. And the people who followed him simply had nothing. They had basic food, nonsensical beliefs. I mean, the same could be said for Scientology in a great many ways, considering the luxury of David Miscavige, the present leader of Scientology, and before that, L. Ron Hubbard getting massively rich by manipulating individuals. It's an old trick. What do we see with extremist Islam? Typically, donations given in the name of religion, passed on to for the sustainability of extremism and the promotion of a dictatorial religious empire. This stuff does not benefit society. It benefits the ideological goals of the individuals who rule over such organizations, whether it's for a goal they believe in, or claim to believe in, or whether it's simply to line their own pockets, it doesn't really matter too much at all. The obvious fact is that they're taking people's money and spending it in a way which is not best spent. So they convince people within the belief through their indoctrination and the strict adherence to the regime, following leaders who are very often self-appointed, supposedly in some way divine or, or on a divine mission, who aren't accountable and have charisma, and they convince them that the ends justify the means.